And we're back with Jeffrey Goldberg of The Atlantic, who has the cover story in this, this month's magazine, an amazing piece. Jeffrey, I want to start with, President. we're talking about President Obama, his foreign policy legacy. The red line on Syria is considered by some people, even senior people in his own administration, a big mistake. He right. sees it as the opposite. Right. He sees it as a very proud moment because he didn't do the thing that everybody in the establishment and all of our allies wanted to do, which was attack Syria to punish it for using chemical weapons. He sees Syria, Syria as the, the biggest slippery slope there is. And it's a moment when he now tells himself and told me that he's proud of that because he resisted all of the people pushing him to go have a war with Syria. Does he, what about the, having said it out loud, does he at least acknowledge that that maybe wasn't such a great idea, saying there was a red line because ultimately he doesn't cross yeah, it? Yeah, he, he, he didn't, he, he, he doesn't regret it or didn't say that he regrets it. He thought that it was an appropriate brushback pitch. But what I think he's learned is don't make these kind of statements unless you're going to carry it through. And that's what, that was the big lesson, I think, for him. He also talks about f free riders. Yeah. Um, and we hear this term, or I hear this term a lot. Explain what free riders are and that concept around right. it. Free riders are American allies, mainly in Europe and the Middle East, who expect America to do everything for them and don't pay enough of their own share of, of defense and don't, don't defend themselves and just are expecting America to do everything. And President Obama has, uh, like a lot of Americans, some, some level of resentment about that. And he, and he spoke about that. And, uh, you know, he, he talks about, uh, about uh, Arab states wanting to bring America into all of their uh, wars uh, against the, an Iranian opposition and, and sort of says, why do we have to do all this? And he it, traditionally Traditionally, Americans have looked at Europe and said, you guys need to pay more for your defense. It's a very, very American position he's taking, by the yeah. way, on this question. So in the Gulf states, you're saying what they're saying is, would you deal with Iran for us, take care of it right, for us? Right, 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 right. There's this feeling that they want us to be their muscle. Like, oh, we're having a fight in Yemen. We're having a fight in Syria. Can you, you're the big, you're the big guy. You know, you just deal with it for us. We'll hold your coat. Uh, and you go fight. And I think uh, President Obama is a, is a guy who is not looking for new fights for America in the world. Is that connected to uh, another phrase? I feel like we're going through the phrases of the Obama foreign policy, mm. but the leading from behind. Yeah, which is an unfair description of what he was trying to do in Libya. In Libya, this is precisely it. He said, uh, you know what, we'll do this, but you, meaning Britain and France, this is your backyard, first of all, you got to do all the cleanup. We have the, we have the capability of bombing everything we, we need to bomb, but you got to do this. And he told me, and this is a matter of some controversy in the last couple of days, he told me that he doesn't think that Britain and France did enough in the follow-up. Uh, and has some disappointment about that. And, and of course, they don't like to hear that, but it's probably true. Well, isn't that then the argument for why the U.S. has to do everything because you can't leave it to somebody else? I think President Obama is trying to train our allies, in essence, to, to, to grow up a little bit and take a little bit more responsibility, especially for, for problems that are in their neighborhoods, you know, that we can't do everything anymore. Is that how he can say that the lesson of Libya is that you've got to make sure there's something in place after the military action? Because that seems shocking because I thought that was the lesson of Iraq. Right. Well, well Libya, Libya was his Iraq in some ways, which is why he's so hesitant to go further in to Syria. In Libya, he feels like he did everything right. He lined everything up. The allies said they would do X, Y, and Z. And then he told me, I mean, he said very frankly, it didn't work. That's the quote. It didn't work. And so he, he's learned a lesson, which is like, don't get involved in these kind of problems. We have about a minute left. You've interviewed him so many times over a course of, of so long. What? Just give me your sense of what it was like to interview him here. He's probably looking towards the exits. Right. What's his state of mind? Well, you know, I, I've been thinking about this a lot because I, I, I was doing these series of interviews over the last four months, right? When, where, and, and we're talking about the limits of liberal, liberal interventionism. We're talking about the amorphous quality of deterrent credibility, right? We're, we're trying, I'm trying to have these serious, mature conversations. We're having them. And then you, you look at what, what people are talking about in the primary campaign about foreign policy, and it's, you know, it's emails and Benghazi, and we're going to build a wall, and then we're going to build a bigger wall, and, and, it's, and it's, it's all this, we're going to get China to do X, Y, and Z, it's, it's about Islam. And I, have to, I, I wonder if he, he at this point, is, is sitting there alone at night sort of laughing at these candidates and saying, you have no idea what it's like to try to manage the world. All right, Jeffrey, thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back.
That's it for us today. Thanks for watching. Until next week, for Face the Nation, I'm John Dickerson.